Hi everybody, my name is Jane Brogan and I work for Elna UK. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of Elna. Um, it's a very well established company that's been around for 70 plus years and has made some excellent over the years. One of the most um, iconic machines they've made is the little Elna Lotus which is now in the um, Muse New York Museum of Modern Art, Modern Art. I'll get it right in a minute. Um, uh, as an exhibit in there because it was so iconic during its day. Um, they still make really good quality overlockers and sewing machines for domestic use. Um, if you've already bought this, then fabulous. Keep watching because we're going to do an instructional video on how to unpack the box, how to set the machine up, and all the accessories and bits and pieces that we get with it. If you're thinking about the machine, then please carry on watching because it will give you a good idea of what the machine does what it's capable of and what it comes with when you actually buy it and get it home. So right, so now we're going to start by opening the box to see what's in there. So we're going to do it. Again, I will say when you get your machine, please, please, please always keep all your packaging that comes with it. So if you've ever got to take it anywhere for servicing or your moving house, it can go back in the box. It's designed to keep it safe and secure when it's being transported. So right, so now we've got the lid open on the box and we're going to take out the, top, the item. So we come up with the manual first, which has got the guarantee card and everything in it. We'll have a look in a minute. We have a soft cover for the machine as well. You've also got the accessory storage box with the accessories in, in here. And you've also got the power lead and the foot control, which comes as one unit with the machine. So I'm going to pop this top polystyrene out, just slide it out, and it will come straight out quite easily. And then now, we're seeing the machine is sitting in the base here, so if we can lift the machine out. And that's great. Pop the box on the floor, out of the way. And if we can take the machine around now. So that's our machine as it comes out of the box. You'll notice on here, there's a big piece of polystyrene, which is packing just to keep the machine secure while it's being transported, and that will just slide out. So with that, you will also see on the back here, we, we will have the four coloured threads in here, which are tied on. I would actually just take these out and get used to threading the machine yourself from the word go. So now I think we're going to take all the accessories out and we can go through those one by one. Right, so now we've got all the items out of the box so we're just going to go through everything that comes with the machine. The first thing we've got, if we take it out of the bag, is the manual for the machine. A really good comprehensive manual that will take you through threading, the different stitches, how everything works on it, so that's great. You've also got in there your Elna guarantee and another little piece of paper with all the different addresses on. The guarantee is for two years. So make sure you pop that back in the post to us and then we're all sorted with that. So that's the manual. You've also got a soft cover which comes with these. So it's just literally a soft dust cover that we can open up and it just slides over the machine. That's quite a straightforward one. So pop that there. A really good first product actually is to make yourself a little dust cover for the machine. So that will just fold up and pop back into there. You've also got the foot control which comes with it take that out and again on these it's a double it's joined if you've got a same machine you'll probably use having a separate foot pedal and power lead but this is a joined one so it just slides in on the side ready to use so that's in there we'll look at that again later if you like so we'll pop that to one side now the accessories if we can see on here I don't know if we can see on the back of the machine you've got the little cone guide the little cone protectors on here. So basically if you're using the large cones of overlock thread you pop this on and it stops from wobbling around everywhere. For the smaller cones they literally will just slide off. Again just stack them somewhere quite safely so you don't lose them. The accessory box then. So we need to open our accessory box and you've got your overlock tweezers. Um, these are excellent. I would be lost without them and you will find them an absolute godsend for when you're overlocking. Again Keep the little bits and pieces that come with them because they're really handy if you want to pack everything up again. So we've got the tweezers. We've got a large screwdriver and we've got a small screwdriver which is for the needles. We also come with a thread net. So you've got four thread nets. So if you've got a, a slippery fabric that keeps sliding down or it's not behaving, pop the thread net over the cone and it tends to help you 
keep the thread on the comb. We've also got a small vial of oil. It will tell you in the manual all the maintenance that you need to do on the machine, so have a look at that. You've also got your spool caps, the same as you would find on a sewing machine. You've got four of those to pop on there. We've also got our little cleaning brush, essential, and some spare needles. So you've got a size 11 and size 14 in there. And you've also got this little gadget, which is a needle threader. And it's also really helpful when you're popping the needles in. The needle sits in the back here, so you can offer it up to the machine without getting in too much of a mess trying to find out where you're going with it. We'll pop that one there. So those are all the bits that come with the machine. The machine will also come and it will have some coloured threads tied on the back like this. These are, what I tend to do with the overlocker when I first use it, is I will match my thread colours to the tension guides here. So you've got green, yellow, red and blue. Um, and then when we first start sewing, do some samples on the machine and you can see then if you need to adjust the tension, you've got a rough idea of which thread you, which thread you need to adjust. So it just gets you to know your machine a little bit better without having to worry about it. So now we're going to go and thread the machine up, I think. Right, so we've unpacked our machine, we've seen what's in the box, we've had a look at the accessories. Before I start threading the machine up, I want to take a quick look through the manual with you. If you've already bought the machine, it's a great way to familiarise yourself with everything. And if you're still thinking about it, then it gives you an idea of what the machine's capable of doing. So, right, so we're going to get our manual, we're going to open up. Pop that there. So now you can see we have some really nice clear line drawings here which goes through all the different parts of the machine and gives you a rough idea of what they are. So we've got the, the body of the machine, which goes through that. We've also got down in the, in the foot area, in the stone area, so we can open the side up. And that gives you, again, a really good overview of all the workings of the machine. So it's really nice. Get yourself a cup of tea, sit down, have a look through it. If you're thinking about buying one, then just keep with us and we'll go through everything and show you how the machine actually works. It's a really good manual. It literally takes everything for you, from connecting it to the power supply, controlling the sewing speed, the hand wheel, opening and closing the side covers and the looper covers. So the presser foot, raising the presser foot, lowering it, how to change the presser foot, how to pop a new one on. It's also nice that we've got the top foot pressure here that we can adjust. And again, it says normally for your normal sewing, you wouldn't adjust it at all. It's fine. But if you're sewing very heavy or very lightweight fabrics, then it tells you which way to just increase or decrease the top foot pressure so you get a better finish. As always, sample on the fabrics that you're using and adjust it accordingly and make a note of what you've got it adjusted to. We can guarantee we all forget these things. So again, the thread guide bar, we'll show you that lifts up in a minute. Um, you've got your spool holders and the nets as well if you're going to use the nets. It's just so comprehensive this. And again, changing your needles, it really is with this, make sure you always turn the power off when you're changing the needles, even changing the foot, just as a safety precaution. You don't want to sew through your fingers. Um, little tip here is when you're taking your needles out, make sure that you tighten that needle screw back again because the vibrations can vibrate it loose. And if you lose it, it's very difficult to find because they're tiny little screws. And then we come to the end where it's telling us if the knife needs replacing, it's quite a straightforward operation um, and the knives are easy to get hold of if you contact us directly or your local dealer, they'll be able to do that for you. Um, what I will say with this, and I must can't be strong enough with this, do not use pins with your overlocker. If you hit a pin, worst case scenario is you, it will fly up and hit you in the face or somewhere or you will break the knife. You will certainly put a snag on the knife so you will have to replace it um, because it won't cut cleanly for you anymore so just pins I use quilting clips now so I move them as I'm getting up to that part of sewing so you know they're out of the way and they're not going to do any damage to anything and again on here now so we've got some troubleshooting here and it tells us if something happens what the likely cause is and how we can rectify it and that is our book so, and it's worth, say, there's a, there's a couple of blank, there's a blank page at the back. So if you've got any notes or anything you want to write, they're quite specific, then you've got a page there to do it. 
scraps you need them so you don't lose them. We all write things on pieces of paper and lose it. Um, so you've got that blank page there to do it, or you could staple another piece to it, or keep a little folder and start doing some bits and pieces like that. So now I think we're going to thread the machine and then we'll get going with some sewing. Right, so now we're going to thread our machine up. I, if you notice, I've taken off the cone holders here, so I'm going to pop those to one side. Make sure you just put them somewhere safe so you don't lose them. The first thing we need to do is pull the thread guide up and it literally just is telescopic. Make sure you've pulled it up to the full height and then we're good to go. And as you can see, I have got my four different threads here. So we have green, yellow, a red and a blue. I'm just going to pop these on here ready to thread. Again, when we start threading, we need to thread from the right hand side across. So I'm going to open the front of the machine and then now we can see inside. So we can see here, it's almost, it's thread by colours. Same machines, we do thread by numbers and the overlockers, it's thread by colours. So, and again, the tension dial here matches the colour here. So first one we're going to thread is the green. This is the one that many people find tricky and it, and they're scared of it because it's a lower looper. Um, but we've got an easy thread on this, so that makes life much better for us. So I don't know if we can see, there's a little, a little button here. Do you want me to just put, turn that round a bit? There we go. So we have actually got the little green, 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 green. I'm just going to, my finger, I'm just going to, that one will pop, you can see it's gone away. That's going to bring the little green hook there out for us. That means that we don't have to take it through the other side of the machine and back through again. This is the first one. And again, with these, you can just lay the thread through, or if you think the thread might be jumping out, then I just pop it round again and through the back here. Um, you will find your tweezers are in your hand a lot of the time when you're actually threading your overlockers. So press, make sure your presser foot is lifted up and then we're going through the thread guide here, you will hear it clip in there. Pull it down through the guide there. Now we're through the tension, I'm going to pop the presser foot down. It stops the thread running through really, really quickly. And we're going to go through there, through that guide. Then again, the tweezers are coming out now and we'll pop it through. I'm just going to pop the end off this thread. There we go. So we're going to go through here. Good tip we had earlier was if you pop a little bit of hairspray on these sometimes, but I personally don't use it, so I wouldn't be finding it anywhere. So we're going to pop that through. There we go. So it's through that guide now with the green. The next one is this little one. So we can thread that through. There we go. And you can thread it through and catch that with the end of my tweezers. It's a little bit dark here. Um, it's not the easiest thing to thread from the side either, this. Normally I'd be threading it straight looking at it. So let's just pull that through so we can see I've got that thread now. So now what we need to do, we need to pop this thread and we need to actually get it around this little hook here. Take that. And it just tucks around behind it. There we go. So it's through that little hook here now. And then I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn this round a little bit, everybody, just so I can see really well. And there's another hook here, if you can see it, a tiny little hook here, that it goes around. There we go. Let's pop it in there. I'm just... That's it, that's through there. And then we just need to pop it through the front of the lower looper. And that then is the only tricky bit. That makes it so easy when you're doing it. Just pop this back across and then I tend to run it round, pop the presser foot up. We just lift this up and through. And then that's the lower looper threaded, which is the one that most people are quite scared of doing. It's usually the tricky one. So again, we're going to go the same through this. I'm going to thread it through and back around again. Again, let me just take the end off here. Just, there we go. Pop these through. There we go. So that's through and down. Again, my presser foot, make sure I've got it lifted up through the thread guide. You'll hear it clip in, take it down and through the guide here as well. I'm going to pop my foot down again here. 
And then with the yellow one, again, you can see here, it's quite straightforward with this. It's underneath, through here, and then it's straight up through. There's a hook here on the back, like a little wire hook. So it goes through there, and then we just thread it through the front looper, the front of the looper here. And that then, there we go. And again, make sure it's all popped up here. Then we're all underneath. I'll just take it round the side of the blade, through the foot, and just I'll just pop it out the back then, so it's out of the way. Pop the press the foot back down. And now we're going to thread the needles. So again, we thread the right one first. That's across and back through. Let me pop this through here. Again, it's handy to have the scissors. It gives you a nice sharp end if you clip the thread off because quite often where we've taken them off the machine before, they tend to get a little bit fluffy. So again, get our presser foot up underneath the thread guide. Again, make sure it clips in, down, and we're going round now, across here, up and over. So it is quite a straightforward. It does show you in the book as well, so it's worth having, another, having a look. I'm going to have to pop this around a little bit more now. Again, press the foot down. It just keeps that... Um, it, it just keeps the tension on the thread when you've popped it through, just so it's not running through. And again, there's a little thread guide on the top there to pop it through. And again, I just lift it up and take it round to the back of the foot. I find if I take them round as I'm working, you don't end up with a big tangle of threads at the front then that you have to try and sort out at the end. Pop this one on. And again, this is quite mobile, so you can tweak it round if you need to. There we go. There we are, to pop that round. And again, press the foot up, so through the thread guide, down and round again, through the other side. And then we'll pop this foot down and we'll thread the needle. There we go, that's better. So there we go, so we're all threaded. So just have a little practice a few times threading and it, you will find it becomes second nature after a while. So now we're all threaded up and we're ready to go. But before we do that, I want to just make you aware, we can actually open the other side of the machine. And if you look in here, we've got a couple of dials. It does tell you in the book what these are for, but if we can take this in, I'm gonna switch the machine off before I start doing this, because I'd hate to stand on the foot pedal and cut my fingers. So. The knife, the blade is here, so if we, can you see if I can press this in and turn and it drops the blade out of use. So you don't always want to trim the fabric when you're uh, overlocking, so that will take the blade out of use. And again, if you want to set it to roll 10, then we'll need to press in and the little slider goes from S to R um, on the stitch length, if we can see that. We can turn this again. That will go down to R on here. If we can pick that one up okay. So I've set the stitch length down to R now as well. Um, and then we take the left hand needle out and that will do a rolled hem. It gives you all the instructions in the book, so have a look before you start doing it. You need to pop the blade back up as well. My biggest thing on this whenever I do this is I tend to forget that I've got it set on rolled hem and don't alter this. Make sure you alter the stitch length back. To about three is about right for normal sewing. I'm gonna pop that in. Take the blade up again, there we go, pop this back, oh gosh, there we go, there we go, take that down, press in, see it's a safety feature, so if the blade's active then I can't move anything, so we're going to take this, take that back to S, pop the blade back up again, I'm going to close these, and now before we start sewing, you heard me say before that the overlockers have got a differential feed. This is a differential feed here. So your standard setting on that is one. And if your fabric is gathering or stretching, that's when you need to alter that because your sewing machine, your standard sewing machine has got one feed that feeds the fabric through. The overlock has got two and they work independently of each other. So you can set them so that one might be taking the fabric a little bit quicker or a little bit slower. Again, practice with your machine, get to know your machine and how it works and keep some samples 
once you've used a, a few different fabrics, you will roughly know where to set it for each fabric. And there are lots of decorative finishes you can do with overlockers as well, but that's a whole other, a whole other day. Uh, so right, so now we're all set up and we're actually ready to sew. So I'm going to switch back on again. I want to pop this around a little bit towards me so I can actually see. There we go. And for this, I'm just using, I use some calico or something to start with, just to make sure you've got your machine threaded up correctly and it's all going to go okay. Again, I don't need to lift the presser foot up because you've got the double feed on here. It will actually just pick it up and take it through for you. Sometimes if you've got a bulky, something that's a bit bulky or a little bit trickier, then you may want to do that. So now you can see I'm just overlocking. You can trim as much or as little off as you want. And what we're doing, I finish now, you're thinking, well, how do I finish off? So it's something you call chaining off. So you will literally just keep sewing. And there's a cutter on the back here. And then you can take that, oops, I've got that cut. Then you can take it off and you've got your first overlock seam. And you can probably see where we have got the different coloured threads here. That is showing us what thread forms what part of the stitch. So it's a really good idea to say to have a little look at that do some different fabrics with it if you've got it set slightly differently then write on the fabric what you've got it set at so you've always got it there for a reference well thank you for watching this and bearing with me for this nice short video just to show you how to unbox and set up your overlocker when you get it home um, this is the 664 that we've been looking at at the moment if you haven't decided which one's the right machine for you yet we've also got similar videos for the 664 pro and also the 864 air thread overlocker so have a look at those and see which one you prefer to, which would suit you better um, say so if there's anything in here that we've done today that you're not sure about you can always refer to your manual it's very comprehensive everything that's covered in there if there's something still that you're not too sure about then please drop us an email at the studio and we can answer those for you and if you'd like anything more doing like this then please again just let us know we're always happy to help <laughs>